What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Let me ask you guys a question. Have you guys played the Rebirth map? Because it is fire. Today was a little slow. I just got back home from a parts run and uh, finally got words that my buddy is ready to do my alignment. So today we're going to take the car on a drive, really feel it out and get my alignment into spec. And then once everything checks out, by the time we make it back to this driveway safe and sound, I'm definitely going to hit up Jeremy and see when we can schedule a dyno tune. Let's go ahead and get this car warmed up while we move the KRX off the driveway. Now I haven't really driven this car around yet, so I'm going to put a bungee cord on the latch to uh, my traction bar just in case it flops up, um, we can kind of catch it if I catch it in time. sitting at 155 with the fan on. We're about to take this car in the freeway for the first time. The car is very quiet on the inside and I'm loving it so much. For an eyeball alignment, not too shabby. So we pulled up to this fool's place and uh, we figured out what the smoke is coming from. It's the brand new um, diaper for the turbo. It's burning off all the material on the inside, but um, that's good. That's good that um, it's not something else. I did get a patch of oil that was sitting right here on the hood and uh, it lines up with this part of the uh, valve cover. And this one, this one has a baffle under it. This one goes to the factory baffle. So I think it's spitting out of here because I did kind of get on it a little bit. You can see it's clean. And then this one has a little dirt and debris in it. So it might have pissed out of there. But other than that, there is a car on the rack right now, right? And then we'll, uh, we'll get this thing on the rack to get it aligned.
All right, guys, so <laughs> the alignment that I did with my uh, string and eyeball at home, it's not that bad. Where's the camera at? Oh, what? We're in the greens already. Dude, this, this is the uh, Skunk 2 upper camera arms that is adjusted all the way in. And uh, I mean, we're within the spec, so that's freaking awesome. Caster, I mean, it's a little. Caster's a little. So you know what I had to do with this one? This one, I had to cut the bar in order to bring it a little more forward. I don't think I've shown it, but you can see the cut right there to bring it forward. So this one's what, a little bit back? Right here? It's off a little bit. This one, I didn't cut it. So I think if I did, I would have been able to adjust it more. But I mean, it's not that bad. It is what it is. I don't want you to have to strap me. I, I'm not even gonna have you do it because there is no more adjustability. It's already, it's already stupid maxed out. maxed out. Yeah. So that one I had to cut it off like a oh, quarter yeah. inch. Yeah. Just to bring it forward. So that's good to know that that one's good. I mean, if anything, it, it should be okay, right? And then I'll come back um, when I chop it to get the caster a little more straighter. But aside from that, toe obviously. I mean, it's not that far off, but um, I did eyeball that as well too. And then these are the rears. Yeah. Okay, the rear. I already knew the rear is going to be tweaked out because the entire uh, S1 trailing arm is brand new. And uh, everything is fully adjustable back there. So hopefully we can get the rear inspect. Um, I think the only thing that's probably going to be off is just a caster. Nothing you can do about that right now. So let this man work his magic. So the left toe is within specs right there on the green. The right side kind of way off. And it's maxed out over here as well. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is gonna loosen up the, the trailing arm bushing because it is oval. Let's see if we can shift it out a little bit more. This one. So we were able to move this over a little bit more, but still not within specs. We did get down to 14, but then the whole car started shifting on the rack. Um, maxed out right there, which kind of sucks, but you know, better than that 34 where it was at before. So now he's gonna work the front and get the front toe uh, within spec. Dude, the toe for the passenger was at 1.1415. And even the picture shows that, look at that. <laughs> but he is getting into specification. This was at zero, but it's always gonna move when you adjust one or the other side, so. within the service limits and it, it feels really nice but I will tell you that the engine mounts definitely makes this car vibrate a lot but that's granted because it is some solid motor mounts guys I am overall happy with uh, how well this car drove to the alignment shop and back home now going to the alignment shop it wasn't like 
crazy bad with the alignment or anything but i do feel the wheel wanted a fight to go different direction not a lot of crazy vibration in the car and uh shout out to the homie eric for taking care of the alignment he got everything within the specification not everything into the green but everything within the specification and uh the car drove really nice and smooth all the way home steering wheel is nice and straight which was my main concern and because everything is like brand new in the front and rear of the car it feels really tight, like really freaking tight. No slack whatsoever. What I'm also happy about is that uh, after now driving the car a couple of miles to the alignment and back, uh, the car literally just idles right there at a at a thousand, maybe a thousand one. I'm not sure. Don't worry about the check engine light. It's just my e-brake, right? But um, I'm overall happy with how the car feels and how it sounds. The brakes. Um, catches a little further than I wanted to so I'm gonna have to adjust that the clutch needs to be adjusted to where it catches a little higher because once you throw it in gear and you let go of the clutch just a smidge it just wants to take off not a bad thing but I'm kind of used to it with it being a little bit higher otherwise a little jumpy for those who drive a regular car um, aside from that the exhaust system really quiet I can literally drive it in fifth gear and uh, not have to yell if I needed to speak. Like I was talking to you guys while I was driving. Uh, I don't know how fast I'm going because this thing is in kilometers. This is a UK cluster, I wanna say it is. And uh, I was literally last week years old when I found out I got that cluster. Cause um, I was like, wait a minute, man. This thing goes to 200 miles an hour. 200 kilometers is what it actually reads. So if you guys don't know, the wiring is just a little bit different, which is why these lights are on right now, which they're not supposed to. I got to figure out the pin out so I can pin it correctly. So that way, you know, when I pop the e-brake, the e-brake brakes and stuff lights up instead of the check engine light. But aside from that, guys, um, not much more I'm going to do with the car today. Um, but I want to do something else that I have to grab the part from the backyard. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the car off, open the garage and uh, show you guys what we're going to be doing in a minute. And also guys, the heater is blowing freaking hot. Loving it. So this fender here guys we're going to be working with it in just a moment the garage is closed because one super cold two we're not really doing anything else on the driveway you guys saw i was cleaning this fender because this came from the junkyard the passenger side i also do have the driver's side it was caked up with mud and dirt and stuff and i just wanted to get it all off for what we're going to be doing to it and uh these are actually spare fenders to my ef sedan which um are much cleaner than the ones on the car so uh what we're going to be doing uh in this back half of the video is we're gonna attempt to wrap this fender I did mention in a couple of videos that we're gonna be doing body work and vinyl wrap instead of body work and paint I want to learn something new and I want to give a big shout out to the homie slimeball built for sending over a roll of 3m 1080 vinyl wrap that he was going to use for a previous project car he no longer has and uh because it was a color match to my car he was like man i think you can use this so when he sent it over i literally cut off a section of the vinyl and i wrapped this door handle without any type of experience literally just applying what i saw on instagram and a little bit on youtube and since doing this i've been doing hours and hours of research on youtube and uh, just reading around uh, asking questions to some people you know just kind of like do's and don'ts and stuff and i'm a little confident i'm a little confident that i can do this and uh, because the ef sedan and the ef in general are squared body there's not a lot of crazy contours so i think it's going to be easy as long as you understand the concept of vinyl wrapping so i've already taken all the clips and moldings off of this fender just so that we can wrap around everything aside from this fender guard. I gotta take this off, clean off the double-sided tape, make it nice and smooth and clean. I don't have the magic eraser for the pinstripe, so I'm just gonna use a razor blade to slowly chip it off and then sand it down lightly with a high grit and then probably slightly polish the fender as well too. There's a lot of like fingerprints and dirt and stuff that's kind of caked up in the paint and I want this all be nice and smooth so it doesn't imprint through the vinyl once we lay it down. I do have the passenger and the driver's side fender. The passenger fender is super clean. I don't think there's any dents on it to the naked eye aside from this bottom section right here. 
I'm not worried about it because I'm gonna put side skirts on that's gonna cover up this section and also the muff flap covers up that section, but I am gonna knock it out a little bit because it looks pretty straightforward. Go ahead and grab body hammer and a rubber mallet. We're not doing like major body work to this, we're just trying to knock it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over and use the rubber for the opposite side and then the metal on the inside. And we're just going to knock until it looks straight. Huh, not shabby. This is the section that goes underneath the car anyways. I feel like somebody might have tried to jack it and slipped over and then just kind of punched all of that in. But once you fold it down, you don't, you don't really see it. So this razor blade, I use the ends obviously, and this middle is still sharp because I don't really get to it when I'm using the box cutter. Perfect for cutting off pinstripes carefully. I just realized I don't have any like thousand grit plus, so I'm just gonna use 400. It shouldn't take the paint off. It should just smooth everything out. Got some Dupa Color Primer Sealer because I ended up just using a DA to clean up all of the uh, paint cracks and this is exposed metal. Just gonna put a light layer on here just so that it's not bare underneath the wrap. I also spot puttied a lot of the little nicks instead of sanding it all the way down to make it smooth. I just filled it in with uh, spot putty and uh, there's only a few of them on here. Once I sand it off, it's literally just gonna be like little, little like dimples. I sanded off all the uh, spot putty and all these little nibs feel smooth to the finger. Now we're gonna measure out the fender to see how long uh, length and width we need for the vinyl. And uh, I'm probably gonna end up going into the jams because when you open a door, you're gonna see the white if I'm using this fender. Um, if I do it on the blue, you're really not gonna notice it, but uh, in case, we use the white fender this is going to be same color so i'm probably going to cut a 43 inch um length and then so i'm probably going to go 33 by 33 by 43. i'm going to call this now because the fender is not secured it's going to be hard to wrap this because it's going to move all over the place this this is the color right here. This is almost a 95% match to the engine bay. Slimeball literally bought a car that came with this in the back seat. And uh, it was a similar color to his wagon, which is kind of like a superior blue, like my brother's wagon. And uh, it just so happens that my car is uh, somewhat of the same shade of superior blue. And then when I sprayed the engine bay, it came out a little bit darker, right? Because old paint versus new paint. And then when this wrap showed up, I was like, dude, this is almost a perfect match to the engine bay. 95%, I want to say. So it's going to look really good. So what I need to do is I need to get the vinyl on here and cut out all the excess pieces so it's not a big section of vinyl to maneuver around. 
bought these magnets right here from Amazon and uh, this right here is going to help hold the vinyl in place especially if you're doing it by yourself This is the very beginning of the roll of the wrap and this front section right here feels grainy like like I don't know if you guys can hear that it feels like sandpaper it's only sections of it like right here right here right here hmm I'm actually flip the vinyl around so that way all the uh, grainy is on the section we're going to be cutting off. All right, guys, so I am ready to peel this. I'm going to do it half sections at a time. I don't want this to be entirely um, removed from the backing uh, film because it could pick up a lot of dirt nibs and stuff. You know, my garage is not the cleanest and uh, it is going to be kind of hard to do right here on the table. It's going to move around too much. And um, just to prevent from stuff getting caked up on the sticky side and then, you know, embossing through the vinyl, I'm just going to do it sections at a time. So right now I have the vinyl where I need it to be as far as um, placement and coverage. From what I saw, if you're peeling the entire backing off, you start from the center of the vinyl and work your way out. Kind of doing the same thing, working from the center out, but I'm not peeling the entire backing off of it. I will wipe this one more time to make sure there's no nibs in here. I'm gonna pull this tight. You can use the heat gun to take out wrinkles if you end up like, you know, wrinkling the vinyl. Um, they also say that the heat also helps the adhesive stick stronger. So uh, if there are areas that you need to like fix as far as wrinkle goes, apply a little bit of heat. Not too close, not too long, and uh, continue with You're, you're kidding me. That that just not just happened. I'm not hiding anything guys, super transparent here. First time ever wrapping a fender and uh, a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. So you guys saw I cut the uh, vinyl backing halfway and I was trying to work this half of the fender before peeling it back half. And uh, literally as I laid it down, I peeled it back up to get rid of the wrinkle and I tore it up right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I tore it up right there. And at that point I was just like, I don't even wanna do this anymore, but you know what? Uh, the only way you will learn is to make mistakes and correct it the second time, third, 20th, 50th time around, right? So I started working this front half right here and I got it all the way to the end. And I'm not going to lie, this corner was a little tricky. Like I didn't know how to get this corner to wrap up without it being like overlaid with each other. It, it is overlaid and it is wrinkled on the corners, but obviously we haven't started on the car yet. We'll figure it out, um, you know, hopefully with some more research. But um, another thing was I had all the overhangs, right? The bigger areas that I, you know, overcut it. And um, the reason why I wanted to do just half of it and then leave the back halfing on the back half was because the overhang was picking up all the dirt and stuff and you know, by the time I got to it, it wasn't really sticky anymore. I don't know if you guys can see all the uh, the nibs on here, right? 
right there. It just picked up all the dirt and stuff from my dirty table, obviously. Probably will be minimal when it's on the car because, you know what I'm saying, the overlay is just going to sit on the other part of the car instead of on a dirty table. So, um, working my way to the back here, I had struggles with this curvature. And I feel like, again, this wrap is like thick or something. And it just kept like kinking and i would have to heat it up to unkink it and things like that to get it to lay down nice and flat but we went all the way through dude this fender is actually pretty damn clean because now that it's glossy there's really not a lot of dents on here at all if anything just dirt nibs from not being extra careful right there right there and uh right there these little ones as well too little dirt nibs but you know kind of granted my workspace but um we worked our way all the way down and um this actually made it to the end but i somehow tore it up too so i just cut it straight across which still shows white and then um back here i was able to go all the way through the jam and this was a little trickier because of the curvature so there are a little bit wrinkles here and there maybe i didn't use enough heat and then this was also tricky as well too because my fat fingers doesn't really fit into this little crevices so there are small little pockets in the corners of air and uh like right there in the corner um but aside from that this is like one of those areas you're really not going to see like i'm not worried about down here but um you know for the most part this is definitely a learning curve um by the time i finished the front bottom side back i got to the top part here and uh the overlay was already gunked up and i it wasn't even sticky anymore so i cut it off right there right and i uh, got all the air out of it for the most part so it looks clean and if i end up using this fender because you know what i'm saying this rip right there and that rip right here um i can always put another strip right here just to make this white um blue but if anything if i do end up using this fender for whatever reason i'm probably gonna have to peel this all back out anyway it's probably gonna just peel it right here the molding because molding goes on and then just leave the bottom half and then redo the top because of these rip but other than that um i did get it trimmed out entirely and um um, my mistake with the trimming is I was just rushing it man I was just I was just cutting it right through with the razor blade so it's not a clean cut but I did follow the edge so if you look the wrap is literally edge to edge all the way across even these little tabs were here for the uh, fender lining I left the vinyl on there as well too I had enough material to do all of this as well too but all the curvature was just going to be a little um, like it's going to take a lot of time to to get this whole entire thing wrapped. But who really does that, right? Overall, I mean, not not shabby. If if I didn't pull too dang hard, I wouldn't have ripped that. And this fender would have came out pretty decent. But it is what it is. It's a learning curve. And uh, I just got to take it easy next time when I actually do it on the car. But it's nice to see this wrap fully on a panel just to give me an idea of what this is going to look like on the car. I'm stoked. I'm really stoked. I, I can't wait to actually start doing the body work, getting the body straight, and then wrapping this thing one at a time with each body panel stabilized just to make it easier for me to lay it down and, um, you know, run the vinyl on the panels. So anyways, guys, this is the new color to the car, uh, 3M1080. I don't know the name of this color, but it's almost a 90% match to the color on my car right but um anyways guys we're gonna wrap it up for this video and uh, i hope you guys enjoy a little bit of the ef sedan first drive on the freeway we got the car aligned hopefully we can get the um dyno schedule here soon so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you guys want to stick around for more progress on the ef sedan man be sure to hit the subscribe button but with that being said thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace